Hello everybody. So today I'm going to talk about legendary items. Now, if you're lower than level 50, like my character here is, and especially if you're new to the game, you've probably never heard of these. Legendary items are, for short, they're supercharged weapons that make your skills pack an extra punch, whether it's giving additional bonus damage, um, buffs for your various buffing skills, or a completely new bonus to a skill. Um, legendary items are absolutely worth acquiring and using. So, you might think, great! How do I get one of these? That sounds awesome! Well, so the first thing you need to do is you actually need to get to where my character is here. And you can be level 45 at the lowest to do this. It'll be a little bit harder, but you can do it. Um, the reason it's 45 is because it's a whole uh, quest you can only do five levels above you. So what you're going to want to do when you get here is you're going to want to talk to this guy, Rathwald. There's this entire quest line that you're going to do, and it takes about an hour, but it will give you your first ally, you know, at least, you know, level 45 to 50, blah, blah, blah. Um, and even kind of the little in-game how-to-do allies isn't really good um, and it's not nearly as comprehensive as this video. First thing is first, once you have your legendary item and you've entered Moria, you'll notice mobs start dropping all kinds of third age allies, they'll be called third age, insert weapon or item name here. Um, you should consider filtering ones that aren't for your class, so that you don't get ones that aren't, say, for like a hunter if you're a minstrel, because they're not super useful. However, as you'll learn later, you can actually identify and deconstruct those for shards to get various... to buy you various LI upgrades at a uh, Relic Master. So it is really entirely up to you. Excluding the starting ally, so the, the first one they give you, right? All three, all allies can be classified in three tiers, and they will all follow kind of this pattern. So third age, second age, and first age. Third age will be purple, which is the lowest. First age will be gold, which is the highest. And a second age is going to be blue, which is the second it's, a, you know, in the middle. The age of an ally determines how many of the maximum upgrade points you can get. So, for example, if you have a third age legendary item versus a first age legendary item, you will be able to upgrade the first age one more and have more of the upgrades. Now, before you get too excited about having a first age every single time you get a new legendary item, remember that you're going to want to replace your legendary items at least every 10 levels, if not more often. Um, I usually do it every 5 because you'll just pick up one that's just better um, damage-wise and you want to get through stuff. However, you can start getting first ages at level 60, and you can start crafting them at level 65, 75, 85, 95, and 100. If you really, really want um, those first ages for as you go through, say you're a completionist or you just want the best of the best of the best, well, you can do that. In the end, it's really just how much time you spend in any given area. If you're a speedrunner, you probably you might not even use legendary items. Legendary items can actually go up to level 70, once again, excluding the starter one, which only goes to level 40. 
The first 30 levels will give you a bonus, right? A new bonus. So you have three bonuses already when you get one, and then you can get three more. And you pick between two that are randomly selected out of all the ones for your class, blah, blah, blah. As you'll see when I get my legendary item. So, you know, you want to choose wisely between the options, but if you don't really like the abilities, you can actually take another legendary item of the same level or higher, level it up to level 30, to legendary item level 30, and then you deconstruct it at a Relic Master for... Um, and then you can select one of those to take off of it when you're deconstructing. And then you can use that. It'll give you a little scroll and you can use that to put on your weapon that you so you can have it the way you want. Keep in mind that you can't like, for example, if you're a hunter, you can't take a bow legacy and put it on a sword. It can only go on a bow. And same thing for, say, warden or captain. You can't take it on your warden spear and put it on your javelin. You can't take a captain's halberd and put it on your uh, rune. Your class item here. The next 40 levels after those first 30 will allow you to upgrade a legacy, which means when you spend points to upgrade it, and upgrade the effect, it will cost less points so you can upgrade it more. And each legacy generally has about 10 upgrades. So you might go from having a 2% damage bonus, right, and it costing like 75 points per upgrade. Well, maybe when you get it up to the highest tier or raise the tier, it'll cost 50 points for upgrade or 40 points for upgrade. You know, it'll cost significantly less so you can use more of those. One thing that you also notice is that you know, I said 70 levels. Well, you're sitting here like, well, my legendary item is level 60. What the heck? Alex, you lied to me. What the heck? So actually to get the last 10 levels, you should probably go to a skirmish camp or a legendary item vendor or even the auction house if you don't have either of those things. And you can buy a scroll of Delvin, which can be used on your legendary item and they're all level specific based off of the level of the ally. Just get one that's a higher level than your current ally. And, and it will raise the level by 10, the max level by 10. So then you can get that XP and now you have a level 70. In addition to raising the levels of an ally, you can use scrolls of empowerment to level up a legacy. So like I said earlier, you know, when you level them up to level 70, you can level up the legacy, you can raise the tier of the legacy. Well, you can actually also do that with Scrolls of Empowerment, which are gained in the same ways as a Scroll of Delving. So let's go ahead and start this here. I want to record this. And keep in mind, when you go to Aragon, this is where you want to go. Right here, where that quest is.
So here you go. Chapter 9 is going to be where you get your legendary item. Okay. And these settings, I'll show you what about there for later. Come and stay a moment. He has a title here. And a rune. Where they're, they're going to want you to head next is back to Rivendell. Hail, friend, and well so... I'm going to quick travel to Gwingris. I made sure to do all the quests there so that I get that deed so that I can just quick travel. Hail, friend, and well met. There you go. And you can quick travel from Gwingris to Rivendell. Okay. So, this dude is going to give you the tutorial for the legendary items. A shadow is on it's kind of crap. So what she's going to do... So I got my legendary item here. I'm going to go to the Forge Master. Right, so the Forge Master, you're going to identify. Costs a little bit of money. Cool. So now I have three legacies. These ones are all majors which means that they're, they can be replaced, if you remember from earlier, with a major or a minor. Minors can only be replaced with majors. Or, sorry, with minors. So these are some pretty decent. Now I'm going to equip it. The sorrows of the Eldar Slot a relic. All right, cool. So what we're going to do next is we're actually going to hit shift i and that'll open up your legendary item tab okay so here's these rank points that i talked about earlier and as you can see this guy is a tier six this guy's a tier five and this guy's a tier five this legendary item because it's the first one you get only goes level 40. so he wants us to equip a setting i am a captain so, and I am a DPS captain, so I'm going to go with Might. However, if you are a tank, you might want the morale. If you are a um, damage tactical class, you might go with the power. Or if you're a... Um, oh, sorry, if you're a damage class, you might go with power. And if you're a damage tactical class, you probably go with the will. So... I am going to go with the setting of Might, and I'm going to click the Slot Relic here. They're going to be like, are you sure? You're going to say, yes. Now you're going to talk to him. A shadow is on my spirit. And he's going to give you a choice in between titles. Generally, a title will change a weapon damage type. So as you can see, he's got, it says Western East damage type tier 1, or Ancient Dwarf type damage tier 1. I'm going to go with the Ancient Dwarf type, because Morio. Might you spare a moment of your time? So he's going to say achieve the 10th level. So right now I'm just going to talk about the damage types. So damage types on allies give you, often give you different uh, additional bonuses. So common damage is what your weapon normally will do. And it changes the damage type of all of your skills that use that weapon. Now, there's a bunch of different scrolls and all sorts of stuff from vendors that are be up to tier 3 damage type, which will generally give you like a thousand crit. So it, it could be, it'll give you like a little bit, a thousand of a stat, which is nice, a nice bonus. But that damage type change is what you really want. So, most enemies that you're going to be facing throughout all of Middle Earth are going to be. Uh, quite damageable by Balerian and a light. So if you can get a Balerian damage type, that's really good. Now, Westernese and Ancient Dwarf both attack, they damage different things. Fire, lightning, lightning also damages most things. So light and lightning you can get on some tactical classes and 
Balerian is every sort of physical damage weapon that you're probably that you're probably gonna want that bonus on. Double check the weaknesses if you happen to be at a specific level. So for example, if you're doing the Rimmer Chant raid, Westerdies is actually better because it's good against spiders and bugs. So let us equip this. We're applying the title to this. So now my great hammer deals ancient dwarf make damage, as you can see. So they're gonna have to yell they're yelling at you to level up your legendary item. So now let's say reforge. Once you get it to level ten. There's a billion ways you can do this. So now he's gonna want you to bring it to the Forge Master. So every 10 levels, what's going to happen is you're going to bring your ally to a Forge Master here. And then you're going to click on a Reforge, and it'll let you name it. It'll ask you if you want to refund its legendary item points, or if you want to use the default name. I am going to name it... Actually a mall. So as you can see, as I said earlier, it'll give you a chance to choose one of two upgrades that are randomly selected. These are both minor legacies, so I'm actually going to go with the Inspire damage as I use that quite a bit. So there we go. New legacy has been added. Talk to him. He's going to make me go talk to somebody else, which I believe is all the way down in Aragon. Yep, back in Aragon. So once you get to this point, you're going to come in here, you're going to talk to him, you're going to defeat the Watcher. I'm going to do this instance. And then you get that title, Seeker, Seeker of Deep Places, which you might have noticed that that's what was required in order for me to use this Heritage Room. To use other legendary items, that is also required. So you have to finish this quest specifically. So this one will give you your class item next, right? You're just kind of blah 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 random class item. Um, and so it was. So there you go. It teleports you to the beginning of Moria, so you don't gotta walk. Now you can talk to him, and you got your class item, and now you're all legendary itemed out. Just don't pick the wrong one. Sweet. So you can just go. So then you're gonna want to go straight to Dolvin View, so that you can um, identify it. So now that you have your legendary items, right? and you've listened to my explanation, you've done all this stuff, you might want to make your legendary items more powerful, right? So you got these things called relics, which are wonderful, wonderful things. Oops. So that's what these are, the settings that they taught you about, the gems, runes, and crafted. They gave you some runes as well. So I'm going to equip uh, one of my runes on here. And since I am a captain, I am going to go with the rune of defense. So. Then you also have gems, which come from various various ways. One of them is deconstructing these sort of fused relics. These ones will give you uh, gems, settings, you know, very specific ones. And you can get them from doing any instance over level 50. Any instance over level 50 will drop legendary item stuff. Now. So you want to upgrade your damage of your legendary item. Now you're going to notice on uh, this upgrades part right here. So you notice there's nothing there. Well, 
If you get one of these Starlet Crystals, you can use it on your legendary item and it will actually increase the damage, the base damage per second, this one right here. The, it will increase that. So, if you want, if you need to do more damage, if you want to upgrade your whatever, etc. Right? So now you'll notice that I didn't actually spend anything on the available points. So I'm going to do that now. Generally, what I like to do is throw up and just do the DPS first because having all of your skills hit more is probably the most important thing to me. It's our Relic Master and our Forge Master and Identifier and Emblem. Equip you. Boom. Captain's item. So now... Oh, yeah, and it requires level 50. So now I've got my two allies. Alright, they're both tracked over here on their leveling. And I got all this crap here. So I can go to the Relic Master, hit the Deconstruct button, and I can deconstruct all of these. Which, see, gave me a, a Gem of Endurance. Gave me a bunch of stuff. Gave me a bunch of stuff there. Gave me a bunch of stuff there. Gave me individual. These are from the expansion. Um, and there you go. So now I have all of these things that I can use on my ally. Alright, so I'll hit it. So I'm going to use the Gem of Endurance, because that gives me vitality and crit and die, and that's what I need as a captain. Additionally, your class item can use these as well. So you're going to notice this crafted one. You can't start crafting them until level 65, and they're just, they're not super great until you get to the level 120. So generally don't worry about the crafted one. If you have one, that's awesome. If you don't, don't worry about it. As you can see, I can't use, I can't actually use this on my starting ally because like I said, they're crap. couple of tips for selecting the legendary item you like to use. Generally, I just say, hey, just use whichever one you like the most. Um, but for, for example, like I like using the, I like using hammers and mauls. Um, but what you might want to do is, depending on your race, depending on your class, you might have some bonuses. All right, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do two things. So I have my passives and I have my combat characteristics improved halberd training so i actually do plus five percent halberd damage which is really good to, to um have because it's plus additional five percent damage you might also go down here in your weapon proficiencies and you might have something that say like blah 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 mastery two-handed sword mastery two-handed club mastery uh one-handed sword mastery and it will give you actually a better bonus than the other one than than like the basic so you want to check those out. Now, if you go into your race traits, you might have a bonus, right? So Captain actually has a bonus for swords. Or, I, I'm sorry, High, High Elf actually has a bonus for swords. And it also has a bonus for light damage. So being a Captain High Elf, use a two-handed sword, right? Use a halberd, right? You've got that light damage already on a lot of your skills. So you're doing that already. Minstrel's really great for this. Um, but different races have different bonuses, and you might want to look at that. Um, otherwise, like, you know, it's not... It's it's up to you, but, like, end game, that's where it matters. If you're not level 100 and you need legendary item upgrades, doing skirmishes, going to the skirmish camp, and just flat-out buying them. 
at a skirmish camp. Um, is, is probably the best way to do it. Like, because you go to Legendary Vendor and you can just buy the upgrades of Skirmish Marks. Um, doing a, just any instance over level 50 will get you Legendary Item Upgrades. Um, a lot of quests, especially book quests, will give you Legendary Item Upgrades. Um, if you're level 100+, plus, just look at my Imbued Legendary Item video. There's a lot of ways to get it there. 